Magic Treehouse, book number 26. Good morning, gorillas. Chapter 1, Dark and Rainy. Tap, tap, tap. Jack sat up in bed. Rain tapped against his window. His clock said 5 a.m. It was still dark outside. Annie peeked into his room. Are you awake? She whispered. Yup, said Jack. Ready to find some special magic? She asked. Maybe we should wait, said Jack. It's all dark and rainy. No waiting, said Annie. I'll get an umbrella. You bring a flashlight. Me too downstairs. Okay, okay, said Jack. He jumped out of bed. He pulled on his clothes and put on a jacket. Then he grabbed his backpack and flashlight. Jack slipped downstairs and out the front door. Annie stood on the porch in jeans and a t-shirt. The air was chilly and breezy. Don't you need a sweater or something? said Jack. I'm okay, she said. Let's go. Annie raised the umbrella. Jack turned on the flashlight. They followed a circle of rainy light down their street into the woods. They headed through the Frog Creek woods. The flashlight lit up the trees, the wet leaves and dark branches. Then it shined on a dangling rope ladder. Jack raised the flashlight beam. There it is, he said. A circle of light lit the magic tree house. Morgan's not there, said Annie. I can tell. Maybe she left us a message, said Jack. Jack grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Annie put the umbrella down and followed. When they climbed inside, Jack shined the flashlight around the tree house. Morgan the Fay wasn't there, but the scrolls from their trip to Old England were. Here's proof we found a special magic yesterday, she said. Yeah, said Jack, smiling. Theodore magic. He had great memories of acting in a play by their friend William Shakespeare. Did Morgan leave us a new secret rhyme? asked Jack. He shined the flashlight on a book lying under the window. A piece of paper was sticking out of the book. Yes, said Annie. She picked up the book and pulled out the paper. Jack shined his light on the paper while Annie read aloud. Dear Annie and Jack, good luck on your second journey to find a special magic. The secret rhyme will guide you. To find a special kind of magic in worlds so far apart, speak a special language. Talk with your hands and heart. Thank you, Morgan. What kind of language does she mean? Jack asked. I guess we'll find out, said Annie. Where are we going? Jack shined the flashlight on the cover of the book. It showed he was cheese, partly hidden by mist. The title was An African Rainforest. A rainforest, said Jack. Good thing we brought our umbrella and flashlight. Remember the rain in the Amazon? The rainforest? Remember how dark it was under the treetops? Yeah, said Annie. Remember the spiders and scary ants? Well, Jack said, not all rainforests have the same bugs. Remember the river snakes, said Annie, and the crocodiles? Well, said Jack, not all rainforests have big rivers. There are different kinds of rainforests, you know. Right, said Annie. She pointed to the cover of the book. I wish we could go there. The wind started to blow. Oh, remember the jaguar, said Annie, and the vampire bats? Wait, said Jack, but it was too late. The wind was blowing harder. The tree house started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter two, Cloud Forest. Jack opened his eyes. I can't tell what kind of rainforest this is, said Annie. She stared out the window. Jack looked out too. It seemed to be daytime, but he couldn't see much of anything. The quiet forest was covered with fog. Jack opened their research book and read, The misty rainforest in the mountains of Central Africa is called the cloud forest. Oh, I get it, said Annie. We're up so high it's like we're in a cloud. Cool, said Jack. He pulled out his notebook and wrote, Cloud forest, rainforest, high up in mountains. Then he read more. The African cloud forest is home to many animals, including elephants, water buffaloes, black leopards, 
Don't worry, said Annie. Jack cleared his throat and kept reading. Antelopes, wild hogs, and gorillas. Gorillas, said Annie. Don't worry, said Jack. I'm not worried. I love gorillas, said Annie. They're totally great. I don't know about that, said Jack. He pictured huge apes pounding their chests. I like to study them, though, write down their habits and behavior, just like a real scientist. Whatever, said Annie. Let's just go. This will be a fun adventure. She took off down the ladder. Jack threw his notebook, the research book, and his flashlight into his pack. He hooked the umbrella over his arm. Then he followed Annie. When they stepped onto the ground, Jack could see better. The fog had turned into a fine mist. Jack and Annie started through the cloud forest. They walked around huge trees draped with moss. They pushed past tall shrubs and leafy plants. Wow, look at that tree, said Annie. She pointed to a fat tree and wide lower limbs padded with thick cushions of moss. It looks like a piece of furniture, said Annie, like an armchair. Yeah, said Jack. I better draw it. He put the umbrella on the ground. He pulled the flashlight out of his pack and put it next to the umbrella. Then he took out a notebook and pencil. As Annie walked ahead, Jack started to draw a simple picture of the fat tree. Hey, Jack, Annie called in a whispery voice. Come here, quick. Jack grabbed his pack. He moved around the tree and caught up with Annie. Listen, she said. She heard branches snap. Crack. A leopard, he wondered. Crack, crack. Jack nervously looked around the forest. Maybe we should go back up to the tree house, he said. We could read a little more and learn a little more. Annie didn't answer. Jack turned to her. She was grinning from ear to ear as she stared into the bushes. Jack followed her gaze. A dark, shaggy little head was peeking out from a cluster of leaves. Boo, boo, a small gorilla asked. Chapter 3, Boo Boo. The gorilla's fur was very black against the leaves. She had large nostrils and small ears. Her bright brown eyes were full of mischief. Boo, 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 she said. Boo, boo. Boo yourself, said Annie. The gorilla hid behind the leaves again. Then she poked her head out. peek a -boo, said Annie. The gorilla clapped her hands together. She stuck out her tongue. Shaq and Danny both laughed. Boo, 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 the gorilla said. Then she bounded away through the misty forest. Hey, boo, boo, don't leave us, Annie called. Jack rolled his eyes. Don't name her boo, boo, he said to Annie. You don't have to. Wait, boo, boo, Annie shouted. She took off after the small gorilla. Turn every animal to your best friend, Jack finished. He shook his head, then he made a list in his notebook. Gorilla behavior, plays peekaboo, claps hands, sticks out tongue. As he wrote, she heard Annie laughing, but then he heard high shrieks. He caught his breath. A leopard, he wondered. Carrying his notebook, Jack hurried in the direction of the noise. He found Annie and the small gorilla, perched in two trees. What's wrong? said Jack, standing beneath the trees. Nothing, called Annie. We're just playing. The small gorilla screeched again, but she scratched her head and hiccuped. Annie screeched too. She scratched her head and hiccuped. While they played, Jack studied the gorilla a bit more. He noticed she was about the size of a three-year-old kid. Her fingers looked like human fingers. They even had fingernails. He made a new list. The young gorilla size of three-year-old, fingers like humans, fingernails. She heard the tree leaves shaking. He looked up. Annie and the gorilla had both climbed higher. Hey, come down, Annie, Jack called. You might fall. Plus, it's getting dark. Jack looked around. Light was fading quickly from the forest. Is night falling, he wondered, or is a storm coming? The small gorilla screeched again and climbed even higher. Hey, Boo Boo, where are you going? said Annie. She climbed even higher, too. That's enough, Annie. Come down now, said Jack. I'm serious. To his relief, the gorilla settled on a branch. Annie did the same. The gorilla broke off a piece of tree bark. She nibbled it like a candy bar. Annie broke off a piece of bark. 
She nibbled it like a candy bar, too. The gorilla threw down her bark. She grabbed a tree branch and swung to another tree. Don't try it, Annie, shouted Jack. But this morning came too late. Annie threw down her bark. She grabbed a tree branch and tried to swing to another tree. Annie didn't swing like a gorilla. She fell from the tree and crashed down to the ground near Jack. Annie, he cried. Chapter 3, Nightmare Jack knelt beside Annie. She was gasping for breath. The gorilla bounded down the tree over to Annie. She bit her lower lip as if she were worried. Are you okay? Jack asked Annie. Yes, Annie panted. Just got the breath knocked out of me. Wiggled your arms and your legs, said Jack. Annie wiggled her arms and her legs. Good, nothing's broken, said Jack. Just then he felt a drop of water hit his arm. The mist had turned to rain. Oh, oh, said Jack. He threw his notebook into his pack. I'll get our umbrella and flashlight, he said. I left them near that tree that looks like a chair. I'll come too, said Annie. She started to sit up. No, no, catch your breath, said Jack. It's not far. I'll be right back. He took off his jacket and draped over her. This will help you stay dry, he said. He pulled on his pack and stood up. The gorilla screeched. Stay with Annie, said Jack. Then he dashed back through the cloud forest. He looked for the fat tree with the wide limbs padded with moss. As he peered through the growing darkness, Jack saw many fat trees. He saw many limbs padded with moss. Soon he could hardly see trees at all. He realized that both storm and night had come to the forest. Forget the umbrella and flashlight, he thought. It was more important to get back to Annie before it was too dark. They could wait together for daylight. As Jack started back to Annie, he could hardly see. He didn't know which way to go. Annie, he shouted. Boo boo. He felt silly shouting boo boo, but he didn't know what else to call the small gorilla. Jack pulled out his hands. He moved slowly through the dark, rainy forest. He kept calling for Annie and Boo Boo. He listened for them, but he couldn't hear anything above the loud patter of the rain. Ah, he shouted. He had run into something that felt like a ball of spider webs. As he jumped back, he slipped and fell in the mud. He crawled over to a tree and huddled between two of his giant roots. I'll just wait here until morning, he thought. Then I'll find Danny. Or she'll find me. As rain dripped all around him, Jack wondered if leopards come out at night. He quickly pushed the thought away. He tried to think about morning and finding Annie and going home. He was really ready to go home. Why did Morgan even send us to the cloud forest? He wondered. He tried to remember the secret rhyme. To find a special magic, he whispered. He couldn't remember the rest. He felt tired and miserable. He took his backpack off and rested his head on it. He closed his eyes. To find a special magic, he mumbled. But he couldn't find the magic. He couldn't even find the words that finished the rhyme. Worst of all, he couldn't find Annie. Their fun of entering the cloud forest had turned into a nightmare. Chapter 4, Silverback Jeff felt something tugging on his sleeve. He opened his eyes. Boo Boo, the small gorilla, was staring at him in the dawn light. Jack stood up. His arms and legs felt stiff and achy. His wet clothes stuck to his skin. He looked around the cloud forest. Misty sunlight shined through the tree branches. Where's Annie? he asked the small gorilla. Boo Boo waved her arms, then she bounded off between the trees. Jack pulled on his pack and followed. As the small gorilla led him through the cloud forest, her head bobbed above the leafy plants. Finally, she stopped before a row of shrubs. Jack took a few steps forward and peered over the shrubs. Oh, man, he whispered. Large dark figures were sleeping in an open grassy area. Gorillas. There were at least ten of them. Some slept on their backs. Some slept on their bellies. The gorillas were all sizes. The smallest was a baby sleeping in his mother's arms. The biggest was a giant with black and silver fur. Jack pulled the book out of his pack. He found a chapter on gorillas and read, Mom gorillas live together in families. The leader of the family is a large male called a silverback because he has fur on his back and shoulders. 
Gorillas do not hunt other animals. They mainly eat the plant growth of the forest. They are known to be shy and gentle giants. Shy and gentle giants, Jack repeated. That sounded good. He peered over the shrubs again. Boo Boo waved at him. She was standing at the far edge of the clearing. She pointed to something in the tall grass. Annie was fast asleep in the grass. Jack didn't know what to do. If he called her name, the gorillas would wake up. He had only one choice. He had to sneak over to her. Jack put his book in his pack. He pushed past the shrubs and stepped into the clearing. His heart was pounding. He thought of the words from the book: "Shy and gentle giants." As he started toward Annie, he heard a grunt. The giant gorilla with silver fur opened his eyes. When the gorilla saw Jack, he sat up. Jack stopped in his tracks. The gorilla just glared. The giant did not seem shy or gentle at all. Jack saw a stick lying on the ground. He picked it up just in case. Jack's stick made the gorilla growl. He stood up. He was very tall and very wide. Jack dropped his stick. Boo Boo ran and hid behind a tree. The silverback growled again. His long, shaggy arms touched the ground. His fingers curled under. Walking on his knuckles, he stepped toward Jack. Jack stepped back. The gorilla kept stepping forward. Jack kept stepping back until he stepped out of the clearing. But the silverback kept coming. Jack stumbled back through the brush until he came to a thick wall of plants. The gorilla kept coming. Jack couldn't move back anymore. "Uh, hi," he said nervously. He held up his hand. "I come in." Before Jack could say peace, the giant gorilla went crazy. He hooted and leaped to his feet. Jack crouched down in a panic. The gorilla kept hooting. He grabbed a tree limb. He shook it wildly. He ripped leaves from branches. He gnashed his teeth. He cupped his hands. He beat his chest. Roar! He roared. Roar! The gorilla dropped on all fours. He charged back and forth past Jack. Then he threw himself on his belly. He began bashing the ground with his palms. He bashed and bashed and bashed. Jack scrambled on his hands and knees over to a tree. He hid behind the trunk, hugging his head. He waited for the mania gorilla to find him and tear him to pieces. Chapter Five. Good morning, gorillas. The pounding ended. There was silence. A long silence. Jack opened his eyes. He peeked around the tree. The silverback was sitting on the ground. His lips were curved in a smile. He looked pleased with himself. Was this whole act a fake? Jack wondered. Jack didn't know whether to be scared or to laugh. The only thing he did know was he still had to get to Annie. Jack pulled out the research book. He found the gorilla chapter again. He read, "To safely get close to gorillas in the wild, it's wise to act like a gorilla yourself. Crouch down and rest on your knuckles like a gorilla. Keep your head down and act friendly." Jack packed up his research book. He put his pack on his back. He went down on his knees. Jack took a deep breath. He smiled a friendly smile. Pressing down on his knuckles, he moved out from behind the tree. His fingers hurt as he walked on them. The silverback grunted. Jack didn't look up. He kept smiling a friendly smile as he crawled through the brush toward the clearing. When he got to the edge of the clearing, he glanced back. The giant gorilla was following him. He was frowning, but he didn't seem about to attack. Jack kept going. He moved into the clearing. Then he stopped. More gorillas were waking up. A large gorilla hugged Boo Boo as if to comfort her. When Boo Boo saw Jack, she screeched joyfully. All the other gorillas turned to look at him. They made nervous sounds. Jack's heart pounded, but he just smiled his friendly smile and kept crawling. He crawled around the gorillas and over to Annie. Wake up," he said, shaking her. Annie yawned, then opened her eyes. "Oh, hi," she said. "Are you okay?" asked Jack. "Sure," she said. She sat up and looked round. She gasped. The gorillas were staring at Jack and Annie with bright, darting eyes. The silverback stared the hardest. "Oh, wow!" said Annie. A joyful smile crossed her face. "Good morning, gorillas."